Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, I think it's a very difficult time uh, slot where I've been pitched into, and I'm standing between this lecture and the lunch. So I will try to be brief and try to be more informative. So both of us learn uh, from this experience. And uh, today, what I'm going to talk about is a slightly a different flavor since morning, or I think a couple of days you must have been through about. This is not about customer. This is not about human behavior, not about that uh, propensity which we talk about from a human angle, but from a machine angle point of view. And this is where uh, the analytics related to the machine, how behavior of those machines, especially when we talk of wind turbines and solar farms are related to it. And how do we get that analytics into the whole system or the ecosystem is what my talk will be today. Coming on to why exactly this is important. What exactly is the business case? When we talk about renewable energy, it is the turbines or the wind farms which is being invested by people who are something like an independent power producer or a customer like you. When they're investing, it is not for a charity. It is for something they're looking for as an investment. It is something like I do investment in mutual fund, I do investment in some kind of my trading, or in terms of shares. Similar way, I would like to invest in this kind of an energy. And when I'm investing, they make a whole model of 20 years to 25 years. How much is my capital investment? How much is my operation model? And year on year, how much do I gain and get a profit out of it? And they look at an IRR of around 15% plus. When we look at an IRR, it is dependent on the generation of the power plant from these wind turbines as the wind comes up. And that is what is the factor which comes up. Number of units generated in the lifespan gives that particular money to the customer. The point is, how do we maximize him? How do we partner with him? How do we ensure that his business keeps, his investment is guaranteed? And the whole analytics piece, if you look at it, moves around that particular central focal point. Now, when we talk about it, there is another aspect to it. One is the generation part of it. But the customer will not get money unless that generation or generated unit is fed into the grid and it is being utilized by our utilities for final distribution to the consumers. As you're aware, wind and solar, they're not predictable. Highly unpredictable from a point of view, highly uncertain from the point of view when we, especially from a wind. So how do we actually see that it gets integrated into the grid? Because when we talk from a grid perspective or a utility perspective, he is looking for a very certain, I need 20 megawatt of power at this, this particular time interval. I know for certain. I cannot give that kind of a prediction. I cannot give him a guarantee that how much will come. But that's a reality. Now, the reality is that he is looking for that every 15 minute time slot, how much of a power which will get injected into that particular polling station. So this problem becomes more acute when this number of stations or wind power generating station or solar generating station increases in that particular area. Now, if you look at our states like Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, all these are wind-rich states. And especially another thing is the solar imprint is also very, very high in that. So if you try to get more of such generating stations, now imagine the utility problem. It will be very difficult for him to plan his complete schedule for that particular day. He's looking at a consumption, he's looking at a generation. But he wants an assurance, because that is where the smart grid and those analytics comes into play. How do I match this balance? How do I get this particular things with minimum amount of disruption? Another aspect which becomes more important in this focus is that Indian government. Very thankfully that in last couple of years, they have set up a very ambitious roadmap. They're looking for a 60 gigawatt of wind energy, 100 gigawatt of solar power by 2022. If that comes up, imagine the amount of share of these renewable energy is going to pump up in this particular grid system. If we have that, the opportunities are there, but the challenges are enormous. Unless we have a proper plan in place, unless we have a proper integration of place, it would be actually becomes a spoil sport. But we need to do that. And there are technologies, there are methodologies by which we can achieve this particular aim of our government by integrating these much of renewable energy into the grid. So where that analytics comes into play? So analytics looks at three spectrums, which you're all aware of, that initially how do I source this data from various parameters of various transaction 
places, whether it is a SCADA system from the census, whether the maintenance data from mass data, weather reports, all those kind of a thing, they become my data source. How do I get that? How do I correctly put that into place? Then having got that, how do I create models so that I am able to get those particular specific KPIs or specific parameters which will help me in various aspects of my business? Whether it is generation, whether it is my operations, whether it is transmission or related to it. Then finally comes is that I need to take a decision. There are a lot of places where we will see as we have to take a real-time decision or a near real-time decision. If you have to close this loop and ensure that the customer generation is maximum, this decision becomes a very, very important aspect of the whole ecosystem. So that is why I say that it becomes not only a big data analytics, something to say a big data analytics. So when we look at this, you're aware of that what has changed in this scenario is that I am able to do this processing on a faster methodology. I'm able to reduce the time scale, but how much is that is a question. That's a challenge. And second is, I'm able to specifically pinpoint from a particular large, when we look at a major wind energy company, they got a portfolio of around, like Suzlon has got around 15 gigawatt plus portfolio with 10,000 plus turbines. So when you have this particular, such a huge portfolio and turbine spread all across the world, how to identify which particular turbine or which particular system in a turbine is failing or having a low performance becomes a challenge. And as these analytics or the ecosystem related to it is evolving, it is making us possible to actually identify those systems. And all this has to come at a security because that becomes a very important part. Now, when we look at this whole journey of identifying the performance, it is initially started off with just to identify what are the basic KPIs and parameters with respect to just availability, where are my issues are there, but that is not what the customer is looking at. They're looking at more in terms of predictive analytics. They're looking at how do I ensure that my systems which are likely to fail, how do I identify that particular thing? How do I carry out certain analysis with respect to temperature sensors which tells me, yes, this system or this turbine is likely to fail. If I'm able to do that, what will happen is I will be able to change from a breakdown maintenance to a planned shutdown. And when this comes out, it is means it's a two aspects which are there. Downtime of the turbine gets reduced considerably because everything gets planned. And the cost becomes again very less because there is no associated damage to the components. There are no immediate charges or escalation because then you can club these activities with the multiple other activities. So the whole thing becomes a very, very, uh, I would say, from a point of view, operating cost, it reduces operating cost in a big way. And as going forward, we look forward that we should have the systems, we should also allow you to prescribe that this is likely to fail, this would require these, these action A, B, Z, and these particular materials are required, these kind of skilled engineers are required, please plan properly. So this will also allow us to material planning to happen, our resource planning to happen, and that prescription model can be built over our large repository and history which we have over the last 20 years to build that particular model. And then IBM is working on this cognitive analytics, which is also as will evolve, combining the machine learning and artificial intelligence part of it. When we look at the use cases specifically in this particular field, I have highlighted in terms of five of these use cases. We'll quickly go over each one of them. First one is with respect to the power forecasting. As I was talking about that in case the renewable energy or the wind energy or solar energy has to be pumped into the grid, there is a requirement for a definite kind of a forecast to be given to these SLDCs or these utilities. They're looking at every 15 minutes interval, what is a kind of a power from a wind park will be injected into that particular polling station. Now to actually identify my 24 hours, next 24 hours or the day ahead, how much of the forecast is going to be, it is a challenge because of the wind is highly unpredictable. Yes? So what we do is we have to take the multiple sources of these particular data source, which includes the data coming from the wind turbines through our real-time VSAT networks or our MPLS networks. 
Then we have the historical data of the past of that particular area. We also need to integrate with respect to the MetMask data, what is giving you our weather reports and various aspects to it. Further, there are various maintenance reports which is also need to be integrated. Because if a turbine is down, out of the 50 turbines, if there are five turbines are down, I need to reduce that much of power which is generated from that overall calculation. How do I get that data also? So I need to have that input also coming on a near real-time basis and to be factored into the overall model. All these inputs have to be worked out in a near real-time basis and to predict the power, which is at every 15 minutes, and send it to the SLDC. Another aspect is that this power which is predicted using this model can be revised after every one and a half hour. So in a particular day, we have to give 18 of such revisions to that particular utility so that he can continuously plan and integrate into his planning process. So the various models which is used, which is there, there are statistical model, numerical weather prediction model, or a combination of model, or an ensemble of model, which is used to reduce this inaccuracy in the system. Having learned over the past, utilities have come out, or I would say CRC has come out with guidelines, where they're looking for not more than 15%, plus minus 15% accuracy, or rather inaccuracy in the system. In case our error increases beyond this plus minus 15%, there are penalties which are coming to be imposed. And these penalties become extremely heavy. So no agency, no power producer is willing to pay these penalties. And that is what becomes the challenge, that how do we improve our models in the systems so that our prediction remains in that plus minus 15% band. There are various factors which influence this prediction. That first is that, how do I carry out my model? How do I build my model? With the statistical model, which modeling technique do I use? How do I combine various modeling techniques to create a single forecast? How do I learn over a period of time in an iterative way to get that particular values? Then I also need to get a real-time value wherever there is an outage, because that much of power I need to reduce. That much of power plants are not generating. And I need to factor it. Otherwise, my power prediction model may be fine, but my output will not be correct and then various other aspects with it to weather and other aspect part of it. So coming on to the next part, that's a reliability and costing analysis. This is where we talk about primarily from our operation cost point of view. How do we reduce our operational cost? How do we improve our operations as such? And when we talk about operation, it is the performance of a turbine which is a multidisciplinary, multiple systems are there working seamlessly in that. How can we identify that which particular system or subsystem is having a different failure level? So we have to take the historical data, the performance data, the maintenance data, the SCARA data part of it, which we talk about from a sensor data, and combine all this to identify that which turbine is having what problem. Now, when we carry out this particular thing, there could be a simple calculations, must have everyone be aware of, that is what is the time between failure, time to repair, and all this. Yes, it gives it just an overview. But what is important is that we need to build this whole thing into our complete ecosystem right from strategic to tactical level. I need to see that how my complete modeling is affecting my KPIs right from the top to bottom. How do I improve my O&M costing? Is there a way that there is some red flag area? Is there some kind of a system is having a problem? Or is there a particular wind farm is having a problem? We've identified by this that there are particular systems which was having a problem in a particular area only. And finally, it was a combination of factor of the diagnostics, the skill of the team which was there, and the weather prevalent in that particular area. So finally what came out was that we were supposed to train a team into that particular repair techniques which are prevalent in that state. So all these things comes out with very new insights into our operating scenarios and which allows us to improve upon where we are 
supposed to cut our cost, reduce our downtimes of a turbine, and improve overall the availability of our system. These are simple, which we have time to repair and time between failure, which tells you that which system is performing in what way in comparison to others. So one can home on to a particular system. But what is more important than this is, how do these particular systems are performing over the 25 years lifespan? Because that is what is required to us to actually identify the behavior much before it starts failing in a larger way. Presently, we have 10 to 15 models, each model having a different kind of a technology or a set of technology in a different places. So region specific, model specific, system specific, one need to have a various kind of analysis which tells us, yes, this is a problem. And we can feed it back to our technology team for various technology related improvements or those particular initiatives or interventions. You may be heard of the Weibull analysis, which carries out the lifetime analysis, which is being predominantly carried out to identify those particular system level and subsystem level issues, which is then plugged or interfaced back into the technology and operation team to identify exactly that this particular period of the life, my turbines have started behaving in a failure mode. So identify that failure mode, identify that period. We have identified that there are certain systems which required uh, intervention at fifth year. That particular system was then re-engineered, carried out, and then validated by those particular interventions which are there. Yes, the subsequent models were not having the same problem at the fifth year. So these studies help us to analyze those things, reduce our downtimes, and improve overall the reliability.